Welcome to lecture 26, section 5.3 of the text Elementary Linear Algebra by Ron Larson, 7th edition, Sengage Learning. Orthonormal basis, Gram Schmidt process. This is Dr. Gilbert Iyabi. Lecture goals number one show that a set of vectors is orthogonal and forms an orthonormal basis and represent a vector relative to an orthonormal basis. Lecture goals show that a set of vectors is orthogonal and forms an orthonormal basis and represent a vector relative to an orthonormal basis. 2. Apply the gram schmidt orthonormalization process. Definitions Number 1. A set S of vectors in an inner product space V is said to be orthogonal if every pair of vectors in S is orthogonal, i.e. for every VI, VJ in S, VI dot VJ equals 0. Or, more generally speaking, for every VI, VJ in S, the inner product of VI, VJ is 0. Secondly, if in addition each vector in the set is a unit vector, i.e. the norm is 1, then S is said to be an orthonormal set. Interesting. Example 1. Show that the set S is an orthonormal basis for R. 3. Firstly, we show that S is an orthonormal set and then use knowledge from chapter 4 to conclude that S would be a basis for R3. As a matter of fact, let's start from there. S has three vectors that do not lie on the same plane. So these three vectors span R3. Now since these vectors span R3 and the dimension of S is 3 from knowledge gained in chapter 4, we conclude that S is a basis for R3. So our big question for today is to verify that S is an orthonormal set. Well, interestingly enough, to verify that we really don't have too much to do. We just have to show that all the vectors are pairwise orthogonal and the norm of each individual vector is 1. So I take the dot product of V1 and V2, it gives me a 0. The dot product of V1 and V3, that gives me a 0. The dot product of V2 and V3, that gives me a 0. And I find the norm of V1, remember, that is just the square root of this first component squared plus the second component squared plus the third component squared, and that would give me a 1. Same thing here. Take the norm of this vector. That should give you a 1. Take the norm of this vector. That should give you a 1. And we conclude that the set S is an orthonormal set and it is also a basis for RQ and therefore it is an orthonormal basis for R3. Some very interesting theorems that would put some ideas together and get us really excited. Number one, orthogonal sets are linearly independent. Interesting. So if S defined by the vectors V1, V2, Vn is an orthogonal set of non-zero vectors in an inner product space V, then I claim that S is linearly independent. Whoa. So if I give you a set S with as many vectors as S may have and ask you to verify that S is linearly independent, all you have to do is to check pairwise orthogonality of the vectors in S. And if that is true, then we can conclude that the set S is linearly independent. Corollary. If V is an inner product space of dimension N, then any orthogonal set of n non-zero vectors is a basis for V. 
we do not even require orthonormality. Orthogonality works. So if you go back to all those problems where you were asked to verify that a set S is a basis for a vector space V, if V has dimension N and S also has N non-zero vectors, all you needed to do to come up with the conclusion that S was a basis for V was simply to check that all the vectors were pairwise orthogonal, i.e. the set S was an orthogonal set. That, that's a beautiful shortcut. To verify that a given set of vectors is a basis for a vector space V. Example 2. Show that the following set is a basis for R4. Our vector space V is R4. It has dimension 4. S has 1, 2, 3, 4 vectors. Beautiful. So what do we have to show? Verify that those vectors are pairwise orthogonal. And we start off with V1. We take the dot product of V1 and V2, V1 and V3, V1 and V4, V2 and V3, V2 and V4, V3 and V4, and we get all zeros and conclude. Therefore, S is a basis for R4. Beautiful. Theorem. Coordinates relative to an orthonormal basis. The coordinates that are relative to an orthonormal basis. Let B be an orthonormal basis for an inner product space V. Then the coordinate representation of a vector W relative to B is given by W equals the inner product of W V1 times the vector V1 plus the inner product of W V2 times the vector V2 plus plus the inner product of W V N times the vector V N. So we are interested in something here. Finding the coordinates relative to an orthonormal basis. Let me give you an example. Find the coordinate matrix of the vector W equals 5, negative 5, 2 relative to the following orthonormal basis for R3. In other words, find the coordinates of W relative to the orthonormal basis B. These coordinates are called the Fourier coefficients of W relative to B after the French mathematician Jean-Baptiste Joseph Fourier. And the solution? B is V1, V2, V3. Because B is orthonormal, we use theorem 5.11 to find the coordinates. And the coordinates will just be the dot product of W and V1. W and V2, W and V3, and here we have our Fourier coefficients. So we say the coordinate matrix relative to B is given by the transpose of negative 1, negative 7, and 2. It's very easy to find the coordinate matrix relative to an orthonormal basis B. The one big thing in this class that we need to know before we say, yeah, we're done, is how to generate an orthonormal basis. The Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization process. If I give you a basis for an inner product space, how do you generate an orthonormal basis from the given basis B? Because once you get your orthonormal basis, you can do a lot of things with it, including finding the coordinates relative to the orthonormal basis. Well, this is the process. We are given the basis B. The first thing is to find an orthogonal basis for V from the regular basis given. Remember, an orthogonal basis, all the vectors are pairwise orthogonal. So how do I generate an orthogonal basis from B? This is the procedure. My orthogonal basis would be the set B prime. And the vectors would be W1, W2, right up to Wn. 
dimension n just like b but this is how we define the vectors w1 is the same as my v1 life is good and this is how i define my w2 my w3 my w4 right up to wn and the vectors w1 w2 w3 wn would form an orthogonal basis for v it is not orthonormal yet it is just orthogonal now i go into my orthogonal basis for v and orthonormalize the basis my orthonormal basis would be the set b prime prime with vectors u1 u2 right up to un what is u1 remember u1 has to be a unit vector how do i get a unit vector well it is simply my first orthogonal vector divided by the norm of that orthogonal vector so that will be w1 divided by the norm of w1 comma w2 divided by the norm of w2 dash 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 comma wn divided by the norm of wn in other words ui equals wi divided by the norm of wi and that would give me an orthonormal basis for my vector space v and as a matter of fact the span of my original vectors v1 v2 vk equals the span of u1 u2 up to uk for k1 to n interesting and recall that for example this simply means the inner product of v2 w1 divided by the inner product of v1 v1 times the vector w1 let's look at an example apply the gram schmidt autonormalization process to the following basis for r3 step one find b prime which will be w1 w2 w3 that would be an orthogonal basis and the next step find b prime prime which will be u1, u2, u3, and each of the ui's would be a unit vector. And our set b prime prime would be an orthonormal basis for R3, which has been generated by the gram schmidt autonormalization process. I would leave the details as a simple exercise for serious students. Thank you very much.